The monomyth is a term used to describe a journey in which a hero overcomes insurmountable odds and claims victory. Perhaps the most famous hero's journey, David vs. Goliath, set the precedent for what we expect from heroes, an unlikely character overcoming an unbeatable obstacle, claiming victory and becoming a hero. We've advanced far past David vs. Goliath, but modern storytelling still follows the same formula set almost 2500 years ago. A similar concept we've adopted is that of the hero's tragedy. The legendary philosopher and scientist Aristotle is credited with the creation of the tragic hero. In the words of Aristotle, a tragic hero must evoke fear and pity in the audience, later bringing them to a powerful catharsis and deeper understanding of themselves and the work that they're enjoying. But what makes a hero? Heroism is defined as great bravery, a bravery that most of us could never replicate, a bravery only our hero shows, even during the most dismal of times. We enjoy rooting for heroes because of what they represent and the evil they overcome. Good versus evil is one of the basics of storytelling, but also one of the most important. A hero's story is often good versus evil, hero versus villain, and when we incorporate tragedy into this dynamic, it becomes that much better. But why? What makes a tragic hero so compelling? Are we just rooting for good to overcome evil, or is it more than that? Maybe it's personal experience that draws us to tragedy, or maybe we just enjoy good writing. Nevertheless, we root for these heroes, and their tragedies only intensify that support. Even when our heroes do terrible things, a layer of tragedy can often nullify a character's actions, even getting us to fall in love with their story. One of television's most loved characters is Vince Gilligan's Jesse Pinkman, a drug lord kingpin and bona fide murderer. One of television's most tragic protagonists is also Jesse Pinkman, a victim of extreme mental abuse and manipulation by his partner, Walker White. Throughout Breaking Bad, Jesse Pinkman changes. He starts as a relatively carefree guy who parties and drinks with his friends. He's a drug dealer but only deals small amounts and manages to avoid violence. He's no hero but he's not evil. However, when he meets Walter White, his entire life changes. In a way, Walter White is the evil that our protagonist, Jesse Pinkman, must overcome. We see Walter take advantage of Jesse, using him to kill others and grow his drug empire. We, as an audience, root for Jesse to break free from Walter's hole, but Jesse's life slowly worsens over the course of the show. He loses friends, family, and loved ones all as a result of Walter White's actions. But throughout this tragedy, we root for Jesse. Despite him killing, we root for Jesse. The pain Jesse experiences helps us root for him. We understand why he's had to kill and we know he takes no pleasure in murder. So when he's forced to kill, it hurts us. We know Jesse is only murdering out of necessity and we see the damaging effect it has on him. Him feeling remorse for his murders doesn't make them forgivable, but it makes them a little more tolerable. Manipulation of a character contributes to tragedy. Evil convincing good that their way of thinking is flawed can be one of the most treacherous stories to watch unfold. A hero's slow descent from good to bad is often painful for the viewer. Tragedy allows us to root for characters in spite of their actions. As Jesse murders, we still root for his success. As these characters overcome and succumb to evil, we support them. As these heroes murder innocents, we support them. Perhaps the tragedy surrounding their stories allows us to forgive what should be unforgivable actions. Perhaps the good our heroes once held validates our support. Or maybe we forgive our hero's crimes because of the manipulation they endured. But what about when our hero's tragedy is self-inflicted? Why do we root for a character who, time and time again, rejects helps and hurts others around them? How could they possibly deserve forgiveness if their tragedy is self-imposed? Bojack Horseman epitomizes self-induced tragedy. Back in the 90s, he was the star of an extremely popular sitcom becoming one of the biggest celebrities in the world. However, we're only shown select flashbacks of this success as the show takes place in the modern day. The show initially comes off as a lighthearted comedy with hints of darker themes, but as we watch more and more, it becomes so much more than that. Bojack Horseman is the story of an addict celebrity who can't overcome his own struggles and ends up hurting others around him. He's haunted by his mother's words and his father's neglect, both contributing to his cruel and self-destructive nature. He's deeply aware of his flaws, yet he can never fully overcome them, so he turns to substance abuse to drown himself out. After Bojack's show is cancelled, he fails to find any meaningful work in life. For 20 years, he found little success, managing to star in only one show which failed. However, after his good friend Diane Ghost writes a book about him, Bojack is offered an opportunity to star in the movie Secretariat, a biopic about his biggest inspiration as a child. Bojack lands the role, but his original director is fired, and the film transforms from a dark gritty biopic to a fun family friendly experience. Bojack is disappointed with the film's direction and he decides to run away, promptly ending his role in Secretariat's creation. But when Bojack returns, he finds the movie had been made. Bojack had not appeared in the movie, instead a CGI model was used for Bojack, and for this, he was nominated for an Oscar. Bojack obsesses over this Oscar, it becomes his way to validate his worth, it becomes his proof of success. This Oscar means everything, so when Bojack doesn't win, it destroys him, and despite not acting a single 
scene in the movie, he believes he deserved the Oscar. Bojack's tragedy lies in his inability to change. He knows he needs to change and he's tried, but he always relapses. Every time Bojack relapses, his actions worsen, and his relationship with Sarah Lynn epitomizes his tragic nature. Sarah Lynn was a star child actor on the same show as Bojack. They'd both risen to fame together with a father-daughter kind of relationship. Sarah Lynn was often neglected by her parents and everyone else in her life, so Bojack became her childhood guidance. As Sarah Lynn grew up, she became a wildly successful pop star, but also incredibly lonely. She understood no one was actually her friend, people just used her to get things they wanted. Just like Bojack, she turned to substance abuse. When Bojack lost his Oscar, he had no one to turn to, so he convinced Sarah Lynn, a girl he shared a father-daughter dynamic with, to break her nine-month sobriety and go on a month-long bender. Throughout this bender, both attempted to make amends to people they'd previously hurt. Despite trying to fix their past mistakes, they end up worsening the effects they had on individuals, showing Bojack's tragic self-destructive nature. Sarah Lynn and Bojack's bender climaxes with a visit to the planetarium. Both have been heavily intoxicated for over a month. However, Sarah Lynn decided to try Bojack Horseman, a new type of drug. She leans into Bojack's arms recalling her childhood dream of wanting to be an architect. But as Bojack calls Sarah Lynn's name, she doesn't respond. The viewer becomes painfully aware that Sarah Lynn has died. Sarah Lynn? Bojack Horseman epitomizes self-induced tragedy. His inability to change hurts those around him, including himself. He's painfully alone and painfully aware of his flaws. Despite his awareness, he's unable to break his self-destructive cycle. He repeats the same mistakes over and over, worsening his wrongdoings with each new mistake he makes. Despite his miserable childhood, Bojack's narcissism and addiction are the main causes of his suffering. Bojack is incapable of maintaining meaningful relationships. Bojack makes irredeemable mistakes. Bojack doesn't deserve for forgiveness, but still, he gets it. We may not like Bojack, we may not support Bojack, but we still love the character, and we love the show. We enjoy watching Bojack's tragedy, we enjoy watching him destroy his relationships, we enjoy watching him commit heinous acts. Tragedy allows us to root for Bojack. We root for Bojack to overcome evil found within himself, even if he's not a definitive hero. Tragedy allows us to understand Bojack. His abusive childhood doesn't excuse his later mistakes, but it does help us empathize with his flaws. You are all the things that are wrong with you. It's not the alcohol, or the drugs, or any of the shitty things that happened to you in your career, or when you were a kid. It's you. However, not every hero's tragedy is self-induced. Tragedy can come from anywhere, even nature. So when Lee Everett from Telltale's The Walking Dead is thrust into a zombie apocalypse, our support for him is drastically intensified because of the tragic nature surrounding his survival. Lee's story throughout The Walking Dead is a story of redemption. Before the apocalypse, he'd murdered a man his wife cheated on him with, and on his way to jail, he crashes. Lee is quickly introduced to the dismal world of The Walking Dead. However, when he meets Clementine, a young girl who's stranded alone in her treehouse, Lee finds a little beauty in an otherwise miserable world. Clementine's parents had been on a trip to Savannah when the apocalypse broke out, thus they'd been unable to return to Clementine. Lee takes on the responsibility of not only protecting Clementine, but raising her. Throughout the game, Lee and Clementine develop an unbreakable bond. Lee does his best to protect Clementine, always prioritizing her survival over his own, but as a naive eight-year-old girl, Clementine is unable to accept her parents are most likely gone. Early in the game, the player is presented with a choice to either steal supplies for Lee's group or leave them be so whoever they belong to can return to them. Your choice will result in essentially the same thing and the supplies will be stolen with or without Lee's approval. However, the stolen supplies belong to a man called the Stranger and his family. Stealing these supplies leads to the death of the Stranger's wife and daughter, driving the Stranger insane. When Clementine attempts to contact her parents through her radio, the Stranger is able to kidnap Clementine with the promise of helping her to find her parents. After the Stranger kidnaps Clementine, Lee searches for her, but during his search, he's bitten by a zombie. Lee has met an inescapable fate. He will soon turn into a zombie. Lee finds Clementine and manages to save her from the stranger, but he's slowly dying. Lee and Clementine pass through a horde of zombies where Clementine finally finds her parents, only they've turned into zombies. Lee then passes out. Clementine manages to drag Lee into an abandoned store. He wakes up only to tell her his inescapable fate. Clementine had just lost her parents, and now she was going to lose Lee. Lee's death is undoubtedly tragic, but Clementine's future is significantly worse. The Walking Dead is a world full of tragedy. Friends and family often die, and survival is is never guaranteed. The world doesn't care if you're a hero or a villain. Being the walking dead means to experience tragedy. Lee's death is no different. His death is tragic to us, the player. His death is tragic to Clementine, a man she saw as a father. We root for Lee's survival because of the tragedy he experiences. We root for Clementine because of the tragedy she endures. And when she shoots Lee, that tragedy and love for Clementine is only intensified. <laughs> Thank you. 
Tragedy increases our support for our heroes, and regardless of the tragedy's origin, it often increases our love for the work we're enjoying. A hero's ability to endure tragedy impresses us. A hero's ability to overcome tragedy inspires us. The monomyth is a term used to describe the fundamentals of a hero's journey. Stories are often depicted as good versus evil, hero versus villain. Tragedy is no different. To overcome tragedy is to overcome evil. To watch a hero endure tragedy is to enjoy. Watching a hero succumb to tragedy evokes a powerful catharsis within ourselves. It's comforting to see a character suffer. It's less comforting to suffer ourselves. Beauty and tragedy are undoubtedly intertwined. We enjoy watching Anakin Skywalker defeat evil. We appreciate Anakin's fall to the dark side. Through pathos, that is, a literary device in writing used to evoke pity or sadness, we develop a greater care for our heroes. Tragedy and pathos go hand in hand. A work's ability to evoke passionate feelings in its audience leaves a lasting impression. A hero's tragedy resonates with its audience because of the feelings it evokes. Our favorite heroes, whether tragic or not, have experienced some form of tragedy. We'll always remember Spider-Man losing his uncle. We'll never forget the deaths of Batman's parents. Tragedy is cathartic. Without it, our hero's motives would be implausible, and without motives, there is no hero. Tragedy enhances our connection to our heroes. We're able to appreciate a tragic story more than that of a hero who loses nothing. That is unquestionably why we love tragedy. Unfortunately, my analytics tell me 99% of you guys aren't subscribed, so if you like the video, consider subscribing. We've recently hit 4,000 subs, and I truly cannot thank you guys enough. The growth recently has been insane, and it's motivating me to work even harder for this upcoming winter. For now, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.